Okay, this is quiz eight, question three, right here. All right, this is considering two options. Direct Energy has two options for upgrading a nuclear power station to meet new government standards. Okay, option one, Direct Energy will make the upgrades themselves. This is expected to cost 11,200 at the end of each month for 13 years. Okay, at the end of the 13 years, Direct Energy will sell the equipment needed for the upgrade for $103,000, all right? Okay, that is option one. Option two is to pay experienced contractors, all right? Okay, this will cost $47,000 upfront and $12,200 monthly for 15 years. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the options are laid out here. So we just need to fill in the right numbers in the boxes. All right, so, okay, let's uh, look at this first. The cost of $11,200 is indeed a payment. All right, so $11,200 will go in here, $11,200, all right? And what else is there? Well, it's at the end, so we're okay. We don't need to change the calculator to begin. End of each month, so what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that PY is 12 because that is being paid, all right? So that would be 12. Okay, what else is there? Um, see why we get from down here. Assume all interest is 2.33 compounded monthly. All right, so uh, we could put in the 2.33 in here, compounded monthly, so see why would be 12. All right, so let's continue. Um, how long is it? 13 years. And after the 13 years, all equipment needed for the upgrade will be sold for $103,000. Now that is what is considered a residual value, which goes in this column. And that would be the amount after 13 years. So this number here is indeed a future value one hundred and three thousand dollars okay as indicated right up here all right so we can start to do some calculations here all right the present value is what we need to compute because these things are based on the present value okay so that is what needs to be computed and over here well <clears throat> future value would be zero, okay? All right, so let's start. Let's do this first part with the payments, okay? We'll get the value of N from the, use the calculator to do that. So second I, Y, PY is 12, CY is 12. So let's enter those numbers, 12, enter, and CY is also 12, okay? So we quit that, and then we look for the number of years now, so this up here this is option one we're doing so be careful and that is 13 years all right so 13 second n n that gives us 156 for the value of n so let's insert it so we get the right mark and then 2.33 is the interest so 2.33 that's the IY value, present value we will compute. Payment is 11,200, 11,200. And we put that in as negative. And then we put in zero for the future value. And then we can compute the present value. And that works out to be what? A number looking like 15, oops, sorry. 1506145.64. Okay, so that is that number there. All right, now this one here with the residual, these numbers, this number will carry over here, the PY value, and so will the CY value. Okay, and so will N because it 
it is 13 years also, okay, at the end of the 13 years, right here, at the end of the operation in 13 years. So this also will be 156, okay, so, all right, the interest is the same for both options, so there we are, 2.33. And the payment, there is no payment, but there is a future value. Okay, so where is the change? The change is right at the bottom here, payment and future value. So now, if we recall, there was a payment before, now that payment becomes zero. All right, the future value is right here, one, zero, three, zero, zero, zero. And that is the future value. Now we can compute the present value and we get a number that looks like, of course, it shows negative, which is all right. We can put it in as negative and it should be marked correct. Okay, positive or negative, all right? Because we're not told to do any anything that's, uh, we don't uh, have to pay attention to the signs. Round all answers to two decimal places where applicable or applicable, whichever way you'd like to say it. All right, now, uh, what is the net present value? Okay, so we have two numbers. We have the present value from payments, and we have the present value from the residual. Okay, so let's go maybe to the, um, to the Word document here. And if we can pull it over here and maybe push it over a little bit more. So what do we have? Well, let's fill in some numbers in here maybe. All right, so the, the present value, or we could say the present value for going for the amount of money that is out because that is being paid, all right? would be what? Well, it's equal to one five one five zero six one four five point six four. All right? So that is the present value out. That's being paid out. So the present value in, okay, will be what? That's in. So let's see what that works out to be. That is this number right here. 76105.66. All right, so what is the net present value? It is in minus out. Okay, so as we saw before with the previous question, so net present value is equal to the PV in, PV in, okay minus the PV out, okay? And there we are. So what is that equal to? That is equal to what? The N is 76105.66 minus 150614545.64, okay? Now we can use the calculator and get the answer. And the answer would be whatever that works out to be. So this is the, sorry, there we go. Get the calculator to work. So that is the present value. And then we can subtract 1506145.64. And that would be equal to? Well, okay, we get a negative number, so let's put it down here. Net present value would be equal to negative 1430. Maybe we use the commas so we make life, it, make it easier to read. And there we are, 0.98. Now we could run that to uh, approximately, we could say it's equal to, let's say the nearest dollar, so 1 comma 403, comma 040. Okay, and you could put that answer for the net present value for option one. Okay, so let's go down here, and there it is. <clears throat> All right, so we put in uh, 
if it is negative, we have to put in the negative sign. Okay, so in this case, it is negative. All right, so negative 1430039. Oh, sorry, we said we could put, uh, okay, let's say if we put in the 98, I think it, does, it should mark it correct. All right, so let's come now to the option number two. Okay, maybe we should adjust this so that it's properly arranged. All right, so there we have it. Um, that is the, these are for the next bit of calculations. Okay, so let's go back now. We don't need that. We can come over here and we can make this larger if we can managed to do that. Yes, we managed to get it and we managed to get the calculator back up. Okay, so let's go back up <clears throat> and look at option number two. Okay, it is the, option number two is a pay experience contract as it will cost $47,000 upfront. So let's ignore that for now. 12,200 monthly for 15 years. So that 12,200 is indeed a payment. 12,200 for 15 years. So we'll use the 15 years eventually. Um, now this number here, the interest, I think it was 2.33. And uh, how is this being done? Monthly, okay, monthly payments for 15 years and the compounding is monthly. So we, retain those numbers for PY and CY, they will both be 12. All right, so we'll get N using the calculator and the present value is what we're always looking for. That's how comparison is made. That's why it's called net present value. Okay, so there we are, future value would be zero. Okay, so now we go to the calculator and we can use these numbers as they show up there. It's a bit, uh, yeah, it's a bit too long, but anyway, let's let's try. Okay, so PY is 12, CY is 12. So how many years is this for? Well, option number two is for 15 years. Okay, so we will use the 15 and then go second and N, and that brings us to 180 for the number for n okay so n goes in as 180 all right i y remains the same so we can recall and see it's 2.33 payment is 12200 that will change 12200 we make it negative that's the payment future value we'll put in the zero and then we will compute the present value now that works out to be what one eight five one eight zero six point two zero. Okay, one eight five one eight zero six point two zero. All right, now that those are payments. So that number is negative, but remember also <clears throat> there was an upfront cost of forty seven thousand dollars. Okay. So to this number, we will have to add 47,000, okay? And with that, this is the number that comes up, but this number will be what? Yeah, it's all costs, so it's outlays. So it's negative 1898806.20, okay? All right. So now this number is a, a larger negative number than this number right here. Okay, I know it's difficult, it's not easy to separate, but this is, if we read it properly, be $1,430,436.20. Okay, so this is 1000 $898.806.20. So this is the larger negative number, option two. So if you are in doing, making a choice, the 
net present value criterion would be that you would choose the smaller negative value. And in this case, it would be option one. All right. And that hopefully all of that is correct. Let's see what happens. Yes, we are correct. Yes, we are correct. And option one is the correct number. Okay, now if as previously we round these numbers, let's round the net present value because it's the nearest dollar. These numbers are very large. So let's say we put in rounded numbers for the net present value. And if we do that, we submit the question and we come out with correct answers. There's net present value for number one and net present value for number two, and the numbers have to be negative. Also, please note that the present value here is positive, present value here is negative. It will take both of them. I think if we switch them around and we change signs, it should still accept the answer. Okay, let's say we change those signs and we change this sign also. Let's say we had put a negative in there and let's submit again and hopefully everything will be in order. And it does take the changes. Remember, it's the present value we were looking at. We change this one to negative, we change this one to positive, and down here we change this one to negative. Okay, so that is the net present value being used to make a choice, all right? In this case, both numbers were negative, so the smaller negative number would be chosen, which is option one, okay? When we're on the negative side, we're looking for the smaller negative number, ne smaller number in magnitude because we're on the negative side. Okay, if it's positive, you want a larger positive number. Okay, so that is the end of that question.